My next guest is back on the show after a huge win, this time at UFC Vegas 55, getting a round one RNC in just 64 seconds, and getting his first win inside the UFC Octagon to boot. And of course, is Joseph Holmes back on the show. Joseph, how are you doing? Hey, man, I'm awesome, man. Thanks so much for having me. Yeah, it's always a pleasure. And let's just start right from the jump. I mean, what a win. What a performance. It didn't last long. Not, not a whole lot of tape to dissect. But when you were looking at this matchup with Alon, like, what was your game plan like going into this one? What did you feel like you were going to have to do to get the win? I like I was definitely going to have to get that jab established, um, not hesitate and not be afraid of his power. Just kind of just throw my jab. Obviously, for a guy like that, his game plan is going to be, you know, come over the jab, throw the right overhand, um, you know, close the distance, things like that. So I definitely had to have active feet. I needed to have my jab going. And um, and also one big thing was like to be either all the way in or all the way out. So either I'm, I got him out there at my jab, you know, th trying to throw kicks and stuff like that, or I grab him, you know, and work the, the clinch game and stuff like that. I don't know if you if you watch the fight back with the commentary or not, but DC was saying that you, know, you have to be careful throwing those kicks without setting them up. What is your uh, analysis of that? Do you feel like that was accurate looking back at it, or did you feel like you were doing something to you know set maybe a, a game plan that you had up? Yeah, no, I mean I was setting up my kicks like I had my jab going, and one thing that uh, spectators don't see is like where your eyes are. You know, a lot of times like when you're green like not super good at striking or something yet you look where you're going to hit, you know, like, and it gives it away to the guy you're swinging at. Like, Oh, you'll look down at his leg. That means you want to kick him in the leg or you look like kind of in the torso. That means you want to hit him or kick him in the body. When I don't do that, like I, I stare directly in the same spot. My eyes don't move from there. Um, therefore, like when I'm hitting you on my jab, you know, all you know is that my punch is coming at your face. So your guard comes higher, you know? And then, so therefore behind that, my leg kicks available because you're not, you're not, you're not noticing that I'm trying to go down there. So no, I felt like I set my kicks, my kicks up big time, but I was mainly trying to set up something hard up top. That's why I was kicking at the legs in the first place. So I think I hit landed one body shot. I heard him wins. And then I landed maybe three to five leg kicks that I was all trying to set up like a big head kick or, or like a knee up top. So and that's ultimately what what landed that big knee. I mean, I could feel it from my couch watching the, that fight back. Goodness gracious! When when you landed that, did you know it was all but over? No, I didn't. I didn't realize that uh, it landed clean when I threw it. it. I didn't feel it. Like I threw the knee, and I thought, you know, it was just it was just in the middle of a blend. You know, I thought it just hit his arm. We we're just gonna keep going. But then I noticed he like practically fainted, like fell out. And when I noticed that, I'm like, oh, wow. Like in my head, I'm like, oh, shit. So I'm like trying to come and finish him off. And I came, I'm coming down with my right hand, but he turns over. So then my right hand's not the good hand to swing with anymore. I should have posted. I should have posted on him with my right and then swung with my left. But it worked out. Yeah, I knew once I got behind him, it was all over for sure. Once he turned over, it's like, oh, you're giving me your back. You want the easy way out. So give it to him. <laughs> Have you ever been hit with a knee like that in sparring or anything or anything close to that? Never. Absolutely not. I had been throwing that knee a lot more. Um, it's kind of like this knee that Kraus likes to do. He'll like fake the le he'll fake the kick and then just bring the knee straight up. Um, and when he taught me that maybe six months to a year ago, I, I it was mine from that point on. I love that knee. It's uh, something I try and throw in practice, but you can't like hit your teammates with that. So, like, I'll throw it all the time and then just be like, ah, I would have had you. You know, they'll, they'll be like, oh, that was close, you know. So, <laughs> yeah, I knew it was going to be a good one for the Arsenal. What is it with you and RNCs? This is your fifth finish by way of rear naked choke as a professional. What is it that uh, makes this uh, submission just seem to come to you so easily? It's a good question, man. I mean, people, people give their back up to get up a lot of times. And I just try and take advantage, like... Mm -hmm. I mean, but I just know for a fact most people would rather get choked than get smashed in the face by elbows. <laughs> so if you show me the back of your head, I'm about to squeeze that mug. <laughs> yeah, fair, fair enough. Okay, that, that's a great answer. Well, as I said earlier, Joseph, this was your first official win inside of the UFC Octagon. What is that feeling like, man? Because I know this is a long time coming. It has to feel pretty good. It feels amazing, dude. It feels awesome. Like, it's like a dream come true. Like, I'm living a dream right now. Like 
my dream wasn't just to get to the UFC. It was to get here and start winning and become a champion one day. So that was like my first official step towards literally making my entire dream come true. Like now I'm officially on my way to a belt. It doesn't matter how long it takes. I got my first win. Now we're, we're headed in that direction. How'd you guys celebrate afterwards? Did you just go out and have some good food or was it more of a low key night where you kick back and watch the rest of the fights? I wish I could have watched the fights. They actually make us leave right after, but we went to a place called Tony Roma's got, got a steak. My girl loves those steaks from there. Those ribeyes with the horseradish and stuff. Um, and I ended up just getting some lobster from there, which was really, it was okay. It, it could have been better, but um, yeah. And then we, and then that was pretty early because the fights ended early for me. So then um, we ordered some really gigantic burgers from, I want to say the Burger Shack or something like that by the end of the night. Now, we talked a little bit before we started the interview, and you got snubbed, man. Like, you should have won that performance bonus. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. You got a round one finish over a tough guy in just 64 seconds. That has to leave you kind of, like, perplexed as to why you didn't get that bonus, right? Yeah, it kind of hurts my feelings. Like, um, it's just like no matter what, man, like, even how long it took me to get my contract, you know, no matter what, like, I'm always getting the shit into the stick, it seems. Like, I don't know. Like, it's like, what more did I, like, I wish somebody could be like, hey, we're giving the bonuses to these guys. You should have done this more. And I think you would have been considered or something, but like nothing, like nobody's saying a word to me. Like I haven't got reached out to, you know, by the staff or by anyone. My management didn't even have an answer for me. Why? Like, I just have no idea why either, like either of the guys, like, I am happy for both guys and how they won. Chidi, awesome elbow, and I'm a huge fan of Chidi, and he has amazing striking, but Chase Hooper, too. I, I'm actually a big fan of Chase. I love his grappling. I like to grapple in my fights, you know, but both of you guys did what was expected of you. You know what I mean? Like, we both, we all expected Chase Hooper to grapple his ass off. He was grappling. He was going against another good grappler, so we both expected them to grapple their ass off, which is what they did. <laughs> and then we expected Chidi's fight to go that way as well. I mean, the guy tried to wrestle him a little bit, you know, and he overcame that and then threw an elbow and just slept him, which is awesome. But he wasn't even winning the whole fight. You know, it wasn't even like, you know, like, oh, wow, what an awesome performance. It was just an awesome elbow. So I have no idea, man. I have no idea why who I don't know who chooses it. And I don't know how they would choose that. Chase's grappling match was a better performance than my performance. I don't know. And I don't know who to say it, tell it to either. Cause I would tell it if I know, if I knew who to say something to, I promise you, I would say something to them, <laughs> but I don't know, man. It kind of hurts my feelings. I just never, nobody's ever just like, I don't know. It just feels like because of the names, like these guys are already established fighters with bigger, you know, big ish names. I feel like that's kind of how they're looking. And since I'm so new, they just completely overlooked me. Mm. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you 100%, man. I feel I feel you got robbed. You, you definitely should have got one of those performance bonuses. Does this even, like, leave more of a, a chip on your shoulder or a bad taste in your mouth to get back in there and make even bigger of a statement your next time out? I don't know if I could make a bigger statement. Like, I'm just going to – that's just how I win all the time. Like, I feel like you see that, it would make you want to go and look at my past fights and be like, you know, did, was this just a good showing or is that what he does? Like, that's how I fight. Like anytime I win a fight, like it's like that, like, you know, I hit somebody hard, they'll probably drop or I'll land a, you know, some type of blast double or something and take their back and choke them. Like, I feel like, I don't know, man. I, I don't know. I don't know if I could do anything more, but I definitely want to keep winning. I like how it feels to win. That's amazing. And, um, I guess I just got to keep on making my name bigger so that they can be like, oh, this is a celebrity. Let's give him, you know, let's give him one of those checks because we give all the celebrities the checks, you know. <laughs> we give all the big names the checks. You got to be a name already to get a check. Uh, it's just a matter of time, my friend. I, I have no doubt you're going to be a big name very, very soon. I, I, as far as, you know, just your evolution as a fighter, I mean, I've been interviewing you for a while now, but have you noticed just some some – even more like uh, you've been just gaining momentum with certain areas of your game training with James Prowess and Gloria MMA. Have you just noticed that you're just evolving more lately? Um, I don't know. I guess maybe not. Um, I've been training nonstop for quite some time now, just like consistently. So I, I'm, I definitely feel a lot more comfortable on my feet. 
And I feel a lot more confident against guys who maybe I wasn't as confident against back in the day. Like uh, uh, Sam Hughes was on this card. She trains at Fortis. I trained at Fortis for a while when I first became a professional after my first loss before my second win. And um, a lot of guys over there like intimidated me, you know, like I'd see him and I'd be like, Ooh, you know, that guy's scary or, you know, don't want to spar with him and blah, blah, blah. I'd seen one of those guys. I can't remember his name. Oh, Oh, uh, bird, Charles bird. Yeah. Used to be a, a big guy that scared me, but he's shorter. Um, and I seen him this weekend. He was with Sam Hughes, like after the fight. And I looked at him, I was like, I can take him. <laughs> I just like, you know, like, I was like, oh, I think I could most likely beat him. But that was just like a, a one initial sign of the growth of me. Just like, you know, I'm now on another level with, with guys who I, you know, at one point was very fearful to line up across. So maybe it sounds like just based on what you said, more of like a mental growth for, for you, like in your confidence and belief in yourself. Yeah, a huge mental growth. Yeah, huge. That's fantastic, man. I can't wait to see what is next for you. And I did see a report, uh, it was not a report, it was an article that came out, Bleacher Report. They were saying that they felt your next matchup should be a guy that fought on this very card who beat Eric Anders. I'll bite. That was a very controversial decision from what I take. Uh, Jun Young Park. D does that matchup interest you? D did you see him fight at all? And do you feel like that could potentially maybe be next for you? I didn't watch your fight. I watched the beginning of it because his fight was right after mine, right? Yeah, he was right after me. So I was actually getting, um, like, taken out of the building at that time, doing media stuff. So, no, I unfortunately didn't get to watch it. I got to watch some of it. And, like, the parts I saw, Eric Anders was, like, pressing him up against the cage. Um, I don't know if he scored any takedowns or anything, but that's just kind of what I saw. It looked pretty boring to me. Um, but, I mean, Eric Anders is more of a brawler. So if he's, if he's pressing you against the cage, then I'd probably have taken him down and choked him. So um mm, i don't know i'd have to see his stuff oh i did see one thing he beat this one guy who's pretty intimidating to me um big old african dude who jamie pickett also fought damn i can't remember his name stocky african dude though and he's very he's very subtle with his celebrations like he kind of does like a like a woman style bow, like after he wins, like, like a curtsy, he kind of does like a curtsy after he wins. But I remember seeing that guy and that the guy you're talking about fought him. And I think he beat him. Yeah. And Chukwi, Tafan and Chukwi. To, yeah. Tafan, Tafan. Yeah. So I don't know. That guy might have a lot more experience than me, but I'm ready for whoever my management brings. I, I could probably bring him. I think it's the Japanese guy or the Asian dude, right? Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Cause he looked real friendly. I remember asking Kraus about him because Kraus does like gambling and stuff on fights and stuff. And I remember I was like, damn, Kraus, does this guy even have a chance? He looks tiny. It's like he's a middleweight. That guy looks tiny. So oh, if that's who they bring. I'll freaking smoke him. Well, I mean, if they're not going to give you the, the performance bonus that you deserve, maybe you could take your shot and, and call someone out. Is there anyone that you feel like you'd like to match up with next? Anyone that comes to mind or someone that, you know, you feel like would, would make a good, a fun fight for the fans? Nah, freak the fans, man. I got to let my management do what they do and just be ready for who they bring. I, I, I've only won one fight. I would, I would sound like a joke about out was out here calling people out, but. But I, I can say one thing. If this person, whoever they bring, has been finished by someone, they're not beating me. So that's all I can say because I haven't been finished. I've been beaten but not finished. Well, man, after this performance, I, I can't wait to see you back in action. Can you give me a time frame? When are you hoping to get back in there? Hopefully maybe by the summer? Um, not like September. I think, uh, I think we'll probably get on. We might get – it hasn't been said, but – I told them kind of like what I have going on. Cause I got a trip at the end of July. I told them September could totally work for me. And I seen they had that UFC fight night in September where one of my teammates is on that card already. Uh, Trey Ogden's on that card. So I could possibly slide on that one. That'd be cool. And then that would still give me time um, depending on my execution to get in that, that last fight I want before the year ends. I'd, I'd like to get four before the end of the year. So 
Fantastic, man. Uh, well, it's always a pleasure to talk to you. Before I do let you go, give me a, a title fight prediction here. Adesanya Cannoneer right around the corner. Who wins? Do we have the uh, the, the champ uh, Israel staying the and still, or we're going to have Ann New and Jared Cannoneer? I think we could see Ann New. Uh, Cannoneer is explosive. He's a really powerful guy. I could see Cannoneer putting him up against the cage, uh, really grinding out that cage, fighting for a couple rounds, and maybe getting a choke or something in the third uh or, or hurting them uh with some body shots maybe putting them out but i'm a big believer in you got to beat the champion so cannoneer can't do it by the fourth it's probably israel's fight because israel's a point fighter and he's just gonna pick and run the whole fight so either way it's gonna be one of those fights you can't miss i'm looking forward to that one and uh looking forward to seeing you back in there joseph it's always great talking to you my man tell people where they can follow you on social media and if you have anyone to thank floor is yours yeah Appreciate you, Ryan, as always, man. Uh, shout out to my newest sponsor, Road Run, uh, Cereal Bar in Arlington. Uh, go check them out. They got awesome, interesting uh, foods and shakes and things like that. Uh, but shout out to my coaches, Anthony Salang Singh with SFS MMA and James Krause with Glory MMA. And then always the awesome management company, Iridium Sports Management Agency. You guys rock hard. So uh, much love to you, Ryan, and always appreciate your time, brother.